Hey everybody, welcome to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelaresco. And you're listening to, listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com. Then click on the appropriate links, the chat room links. Come on in, make friends, get acquainted, solve some issues, save the planet. Good idea since we live on it. <laughs> I'm also published on many different sites, ByeByeBlueSky.com, Brian396.com, GadCad.com, and throughout the internet as well. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the weather. Some of you have noticed that the weather's been a little bit hokey. <laughs> California can tell you all about it. Laser beams cutting down the houses in half. Laser beams coming down from the sky, setting things on fire. No rain, then floods here and there, and all kinds of wonderful things. Well, NASA has admittedly, I'm late. How am I late? 6.02. What are you talking about? 6 o'clock we start. Uh, uh, NASA has already admittedly saying that they put lithium up in the sky to moderate or monitor the weather changes. And you got to kind of wonder, who comes up with this crap? I mean, seriously, who comes up with this idea that it's okay to fumigate people on a planet with something that is dangerous as lithium? But, you know, it kind of makes you wonder whose side NASA is really on. What agenda do they really have? It makes, that makes me think that way. Like, really, we know we've been taught all kinds of things in school. Some of it has been a lot of hocus pocus. You know, we all know this. We're learning. We're unlearning. We are, all, we are all unlearning some of the programming and the propagation that they, we've all been hit with. You know, we've all been propagated to believe baloney, you know. And as a result of this propagation and this, this protocols and, and programming, we, you know, we fall we follow very easily to be misled by bullsh. I mean, that's just the way it is. That's just how it is. And there's nobody at fault here except for those who instituted this type of programming. They did this on purpose. They started with our generation, the 50s babies, um, and probably starting before that because they were propagating the world war. The war was the end all wars, and we are going to save Europe, and we're going to do this. And and it was Ford, GM, Chrysler, Standard Oil, General Tire that started the war. You know, but they propagated, you know, the American population and the public, you know, and then they blew up Hawaii, blaming the Japanese. And there's some some research out there. If you could ever find the clip in search of by Leonard Nimoy, this got out. I remember watching this was when I was a kid, and I cannot find it again. But if you and if anybody can find the clip, he talks about the war, uh, the, the uh, preclude of the war with Hawaii and how it was actually a collaboration of the British, the United States, and the Chinese to bomb Pearl Harbor. They painted British airplanes that looked like they were Japanese, had Chinese flyer, fight, uh, fighter flyer, uh, fighters flying the aircraft and blowing up Hawaii. And the Japanese got blamed for it. Now, that was a clip he did. If you can find it, please let me know and send me the copy because I'd love to car carry the copy of this. But just to some of the things that, again, We've been propagated to believe that this, you know, that we have such a wonderful system that we're going to save the planet. Um, so when you look at the weather, and I've been talking about hydrogels, and I've been talking about liposomes, and I've been talking about a lot of things. You know, talking about artificial intelligence, I've been talking about the synthetic biology, and um, they get 52 million, oh really? 52 million dollars, really? Someone wrote here, they get $52 million a day to lie to us. I heard $52 million to lie. Jeez. <laughs> Ethics and morality doesn't pay, does it? <laughs> but I'll tell you, the propagation is, is working. The prop You talk to a lot of the millennials today, they are so bloody stupid. It, it staggers my mind. I had a woman, a young gal the other day, tell me that she does, she was practicing out-of-body experiences and I, and I let into her. I said, you can't be that bloody stupid. Nobody can be that bloody stupid. Why would you open the door to be possessed by a demon or some other entity? You know, because she read in some book, some New Age bull crap, 
that uh, you know this would this would enhance whatever nonsense they were you know whatever the promise and propagation was all about. But all this did was open the door because some of the stuff she says you could see that's coming from the other side. You know, and I tell her and I can't and I nail her on it every time. I have a I have a Mediterranean side that comes out once in a while and it doesn't hold back. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So if you are a young millennial and you're playing with this new age crap and opening up yourself to no, an out of body experience, you're an idiot. You're a bloody idiot. You couldn't be. Nobody could be this stupid unless you were programmed to be this stupid. You don't open. You don't let yourself out to let something else in with you and then take over. That's been the big problem that we're all dealing with today is the propagation of some of this new age horse hockey. So anyway, when we're talking today about what's going on and what we're dealing with today and what, who's buying into the lie, even people who know better are starting to buy into this crap. It's, it amazes me. Um, someone sent me an article the other day about some, uh, I will use the term this way for in this situation, uh, some Jewish person propagating that Paul was a heretic and blah, blah, blah. And I hear all this stuff all the time. It wasn't for Paul. He would, Christianity would never have gotten off the ground where it did. I mean, especially came to my, where my parents came from. And it wasn't for him. We would not know what Christ was really all about because it was through his work that we, have this, that we are now known about this. But they're pra practicing some sort of Judaic mysticism and trying to get believers who believe in Jesus to go back to an old covenant. Yet, the one thing I don't see these people doing is I don't see him practicing the laws of atonement where they have to offer blood sacrifices for breaking the laws of Moses. Yet they want to sway Christians to believe in this horse hockey. It amazes me some of the mystical madness that's coming from all over trying to hit believers who believe in Christ or believe in Jesus into this horse manure. If you are hearing this crap, seriously, and if you say you're a Christian, you're under a whole different covenant. A new covenant. We're under the covenant of Christ's blood, not the laws of Moses. That's all. We're on two different wavelengths altogether. Even Christ himself said you can't put new wine in old wineskins. In other words, you can't put the new covenant with the old because they don't mix. Anyway, that's for another day, another sermon for a minister that knows more about this than I do. And they can tell you, you know, more about this. But if you are a believer, don't get sucked into New Age horse hockey, Judaic mysticism, Islamic mysticism, uh, Hindu mysticism, or any other form of mysticism. Because all it's going to get you is in a lot of deep crap. Anyway, the, the nonsense that we're being told and the propagation we're, we're buying into today is astounding. You know, the, the level of <coughs> disinformation going on out there. So when you're looking at the weather... Doesn't it seem a little odd that after we get a thunderstorm or rain or whatever, that the very next few days we get this unusual hot heat. Now that's not sunlight. That's the solar panels or the solar sa satellites that get up in the air. I just found out this week there's over 230 of them now across the planet. It used to be two. Now there's 230 of them. And they're heating up the elements all over the place, causing these weather anomalies to occur. So when you're feeling that heat, you can know the difference between the sun and the radiation. The radiation makes you feel uncomfortable, like you're being cooked from the inside out. And sunlight makes you feel like a warm blanket on the outside. It coats the skin and keeps you warm and in a, in a way. I mean, if you've got humidity and other factors, obviously, it's going to be a little bit, you know, um, it's going to be a little whatever. Mm -hmm. But again... Uh, look at, looking at the weather and what's going on, think of this now as a form of weaponization. Um, when we're looking at the rain coming down, you ever notice that the streets are coated? looks like they're glazed over. It's like somebody took a coat of wax and waxed the street. Do you ever think possibly that there might be some kind of hydrogel technology coming down in the rain? Wow, imagine that. Hydrogel hitting the ground, the water components, whatever moisture components go splat, releases whatever is in the, in the containment. And then we heat up the atmosphere. The atmosphere gets heated up and now these things are released into the environment. And they're in, they're airborne. And then you walk down the street, next thing you know, you got eyes running all the time, nose running and respiratory issues, and you're getting constipated, and you got aches and pains on your aches and pains, and all of a sudden you got rashes forming and all these things. 
Are you making that connection? Are you seeing where this is connecting? Okay. Want you to take notice of the weather and how it's being turned against you. Okay. I live in an area where we're in one of the sunniest spots in Canada. Where Windsor, Ontario sits, if you were to draw a straight line across uh, east or west, if we went west, we would be at the northern part of California. That's how far south Windsor, Ontario goes. As a matter of fact, Detroit, Michigan is actually north of Windsor. We're actually the furthermost southern part of Canada. And our weather has been anything but normal. Usually, from mid-July to mid-August, we are basically sweating on sweat because of the humidex here. And, it, and the humidex can be so bad here because of the air pollution here from the factories over in Detroit, uh, the, the incinerator they've got going over there and everything else. And so it mixes with the atmosphere and we have nanoparticles and, or ultrafine particles or angstrom particles. I'm giving you all the different terminology so that you get the gist of what I'm saying here. It falls down on us here as well. So it mixes with the air and then we have high levels of respiratory issues because that's probably the number one problem in Canada is respiratory issues, asthma, um, uh, uh, cystic fibrosis, and a whole variety of other things. Um, so when we're looking at these things and all that's happening, okay, the weather is being used against you. So I've emphasized very strongly throughout a lot of these shows that we need to form a game plan. I hate playing a defense unless I'm offending. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm um, what Lombardi used to say, the best defense is a strong offense. I'd rather be on the offensive rather than the defensive. So when we're looking at what we got to do, we got to look at fortifying the respiratory system, number one. Okay? You got to look at what are we going to do. So what, the big thing that we need to recognize is this. Enzymes are key to almost every body function going on everyone it activates certain chemicals to change the other things it breaks down proteins into amino acids it converts minerals into antioxidants and so forth and so on but it can also help the body break down proteins and carbs and fats that these things can be contained in to give them less potency and when you combine these enzymes with minerals or other antioxidants like vitamin c or vitamin a you can then start fortifying your system so uh, my offensive game plan here is before I get sick, I want to be able to fortify my body to be resistant to getting, no getting knocked on my backside. Now, it doesn't mean you won't get knocked on your backside, but it, also, but it does mean that you may be able to bounce back better and faster. In other words, you may get a slight, sniff a slight sniffle, a slight mucosal buildup, or a slight this, a slight that, and within a day or two, you're back on your feet, rolling and strolling like you were doing just before they hit you with the assault. See, the idea here with this, this kind of weaponizing the, uh, the weather, uh, warfare, is to get everybody to get vaccines. Run to the doctor, oh, you got a flu shot, you got this shot, you got that shot. The only shot I want to take is a shot of brandy. That's about the only shot I want to use because that has medicinal properties for my heart and for my circulation and has benefit for me. I don't need a shot from the medical field unless it's brandy untainted. <laughs> That's my take on taking a shot. Now, in regard to us, you need to be awake, you need to be alert, you need to be take on you know, the responsibility of seeing and understanding the nature of while we're being hit. We're being hit with nano poisoning, synthetic life, um, DNA disruption, DNA breakdown, mitochondrial breakdown. This is where it's coming down. This is where you're being hit with. Okay. And you need to recognize that all these issues and health issues that we're all dealing with, if you're a 50s baby, you're having health issues now that sh you shouldn't be dealing with for at least another 20 to 25 years. When your bodies have worn down that much more, have been afflicted with that much more nonsense, whatever. We are designed not to receive our pensions. We're not des designed to receive, um, you know, um, the comforts of retirement. They don't want us to get those comforts. They want us dead. And they want us dead for a lot of other reasons, not just for that, because we, those of us who still have maintained our mental faculties and can remember 
when we actually had freedoms and choices and, and the capacity to do things and to invent things and be creative without having some kind of regulation stuck up your backside or some taxes stuck up your backside. We know the difference between what we had and the fascism that's occurring in, in the governments today. The United States has become a fascist government. And what fascism is, in, in a nutshell, is a corporocracy, where corporations run the country. That's what fascism boils down to. And that's not just in the United States, that's also in Canada. Canada's always, always been a fascist country, a socialist country, or a country that has been run by corporations. If the corporations sneeze, Canada basically drops its pants and bends over and takes it anywhere they can get it. That's just the way it is in Canada. And, and, that, and that's not demeaning Canadians, that's our system here. That's what, if the corporations want something, the government just keel over. Just, <laughs> just the way it goes, you know. Um, Basically, it's a prostitution game. You know, those who've got the most money gets to play the game. That's the way it works. So that's how it is, and that's what's going on. But the young people today don't have, don't know the difference. They don't know what a blue sky is. They think they're seeing a blue sky. Ask me, what color is the sky? Oh, that's a blue sky. No, that's a that's a white out sky. That is a gray sky. That is a dusty sky. That is not a blue sky. You know, and we try to explain them what a blue sky was. They, then they, they might ask you. Some of them still have a, a brain cell functioning. Might ask you, um, what happened to our skies? <laughs> <laughs> then you can proceed to explain what a chemtrail is. <laughs> I don't know, I shake my head a lot of times. I don't know about you, but I look at some of the things, I hear some of the stuff, and I'm like, holy cow, you know. Mm -mm -mm. It makes me wonder. It really does. Uh, there you go. <laughs> There you go. A shot of brandy with a drop of essential oil and thyme and wintergreen. There you go. That's the only shot you should be taking. Now, speaking of sh that shot of brandy that's, that uh, Daisy just mentioned in the chat room, okay, we got, that's another way to fortify yourself against respiratory issues. Taking a shot of brandy and adding the essential oils of thyme or wintergreen or summer savory or oregano, to, again, to fortify yourself. You should be doing this daily anyway. Now, those of you from that era of time, the 50s and 60s generation, you should be doing this daily. Why not? It's, it's not about getting drunk or getting a buzz, I and mean, you might, it's possible, you might get a buzz, but it's not about getting drunk or getting a buzz, it's about using something that's gonna fortify the heart, uh, clean, clear out any brain clog or congestion in the brain, it's gonna stimulate an immune response, it's gonna fortify you against, the, against some of these pathologies. Alcohol can be used even by those of the Islamic faith, provided it's used for healing. That's even written in the Quran. It, biblically, it says the same thing. He, uh, Timothy was told, have a little wine with your meals to help you with the digestion, because again, it has properties to help heal the person or keep the person strong. So when we're looking at, you know, what we can do, these are simple little things. You can go to any liquor store or any party store if you're in the United States, or grocery store if you have the, if they sell the alcohol there, buy yourself a good brandy, or a good cognac, or a good vodka, <clears throat> or a good gin. Any clear base alcohol, or any alcohol that's derived from berries or grapes, uh, <clears throat> second distillation, not a first. First distillation is a wine, unless you're gonna filter the wine, uh, and you can turn wine into brandy. Now let me explain how to do this, okay? You, what you would do is basically you would take your wine, and we did a video on this, so you can go watch it on YouTube. You can take the wine and freeze it in one of those Pyrex glass containers. Okay, and then what you do is basically you cut it, you know, you freeze it, get one of those vegetable spinners, okay? And then what you do is you chunk off a piece of ice, a chunk off the frozen wine, put it in a handkerchief, fold it over, okay, and then spin it. And what will happen is the ice will, will push the, against the handkerchief, releasing the alcohol in the, in, the, um, in the ice, and now you have a distillation. Uh, you, now you have brandy. So you can buy a $10 bottle of wine and come up with about, oh, 8 ounces or 10 ounces of brandy. Simple, cheap, and inexpensive, okay? And then you can add your essential oil to it. Or you can even do the same thing. You can add a couple, you could add, say, 10 or 20 drops of your essential oils in a bottle of wine. Shake it up, mix it up really well, freeze it, uh, and then you know proceed to to uh, extract it that way. Now you have a remedy on hand. Okay. Now let me point out another thing you can do. You, how about garlic? Garlic is cheap. Go to any grocery store, you can get good garlic. Hopefully, you can get good garlic. Um, 
and take a whole bulb of garlic. Peel it off. Get yourself some good clear base alcohol. Blend that together for 10 minutes. Pour, take one bulb and add about uh, four times, uh, about a cup and a half to two cups of the alcohol. Blend it up for 10 minutes. And then, then if you want, you can filter it or you can just pour everything into a jar and allow it to separate. Now you have on hand a very powerful tonic and remedy that can break up some of the pathologies that are going into the respiratory tract, okay? And all you would need is about a half a teaspoon. Now, if you take it right away, it will peel the paint off your backside. That's how strong it is, so be careful when you use it. After about a day or so, it kind of tones down a little bit. But if you take it right away, be prepared for fire in the ire. It will cook you in the... If something's inside of you... It ain't happy. <laughs> that shouldn't be there. <laughs> you can do the same thing with ginger. Okay, that you can do the same thing with ginger. Okay, take a fresh piece of ginger, peel it off, right? Chop it up in small pieces, you know. Get a clear base alcohol or brandy, you know, again about a cup and a half, two cups. Uh, you'll need about a six or eight inch piece of ginger, slice it up, chop it up, and blend it up in the blender for about ten minutes. Again, you can filter it or you can um, you know, pour it all in and let it separate. And then again, if you if you take a little bit right away, if you thought cayenne pepper was hot, when you extract ginger like that, it is unbelievably, mm, you know, flames will come shooting out the backside. That's how hot it can get. But it will, it too will help break down things in the arterial lining into the blood vessels. It will get into the into the your organs and help pull out some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, so when we're looking at, um, you know, garlic, ginger, we got things that can help you. Even cayenne pepper. Get a good cayenne. You can do the same thing. We'll store it. Put it on hand. The alcohol will preserve it. Then you only need teaspoon increments of this. Is elephant garlic real? I heard it's not real garlic. It is a garlic, but it's very, very, very mild. I mean, the, the, the effect of it, you would have to ferment it. Or, or soak it in vinegar for about six or seven months in order to get the real strong properties out of it. Now, if you want to make a garlic with vinegar, uh, you can buy a Kyolic product that's got, it's got a vinegar extract. And what they do is they, they, they extract it in garlic uh, in vinegar for about six months, and then they, they filter it out. What that does is it increases the L-cysteine levels because garlic has two types of cysteine in it plus the allicin. So when you, when you uh, ferment it that way, you jack up the cysteine levels. So you might even want to start making vinegars or with these things. Vinegar with ginger, blend it up. Vinegar with galango, vinegar with cayenne, vinegar with onion. You know, blend them up let them, and let them just sit there for a while. It takes a while for that to really, you know, do something. Um, even after about a month and then start using it. Then you'll see, you'll feel the power of some of these things that we can just get around just at the grocery store, you know. Uh, but these are the things you want to start using and want to start uh, applying to fortify um, to fortify your system. You know, it's important that you understand that you know these things are real, um, so that we can you know fight this onslaught. Now, if you're out in the sun, if you're out in the solar the solar radiation, okay. You're going to need to take things to strip that radiation out of the body. So how are we going to do that? Okay, you're going to take a bath. Remember the old splish splash? We're taking the bath song. But you're going to add baking soda and borax and pour a little iodine in the water. And you're going to soak for a half hour to extract this stuff out. Because that radiation will keep on breaking you down. Okay? So when we're looking at some of the things we can do, that's one of the things we can do. Another thing we can do is start using iodine. I prefer the Lugos because Lugos does, is overall, in my humble opinion, superior to any other ones. The only advantages the other ones have is the fact that they uh, absorb better than uh, the Lugos and the thyroid. But the th it does get there as well. So, and the other thing that you might want to use is things like selenium with it. Now here's a concept. Get yourself some selenium. Put it with the garlic and make a liposome out of it. Somebody's saying, what's a liposome? Liposome is basically when you take a fat and surround the component, the molecule, the molecule you're putting in there surrounds it so that the fat will carry it further into the body. So basically, let's take some old, good old-fashioned garlic, get some sunflower lecithin powder, uh, or you can take the ones that you made with the alcohol, pour it in there as well. 
add a little glycerin to it because you might you want something that's going to keep it stable so it contains the material and then blend it up and then create this and add a little selenium with that okay you open up some capsules try to find some selenomethionine which is again a selenium, selenium with a methionine uh, base you can order that through eBay online and get selenomethionine add that with your garlic you know, uh, probably about a half a teaspoon is all you're going to need to, if you're going to make a liposome, say, um, a six-ounce container. Make your liposome, have it on hand, and now you've got a super powerful component that will deal with even cancer materials, uh, STD materials. You've got a very powerful immune-boosting material there. Okay, that's another way, again, to help diffuse some of the radiation because sulfur and cysteine helps pull radiation out of the body. For you women and men, but women primarily because women are more susceptible to estrogen uh, activation through the aluminum from the sky. And we do have high levels of aluminum in the atmosphere. You want to use Epsom salt. So take a teaspoon of Epsom salt and add about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of borax in a liter of water. So what is that going to do? The borax and the sulfur are going to and then shake it up and dissolve it and then sip on it all day. The borax is going to also pull radiation out of the, out of the system and it's going to amplify the effects of magnesium by a factor of 13. And you got the sulfur in there also, which is also going to help both with the magnesium and the sulfur to pull the uh, aluminum out of the body. And the sulfur will work with the borax to pull the radiation out of the body. So these are things that you want to start maintaining and doing. These are things you can buy at any dollar store and put together. So when we're looking at what we can do, we got to start being offensive. Okay, in the old ancient realms of Ayurvedic and uh, Chinese tra uh, tra traditional Chinese medicine, they didn't take things because they got sick and took them. They took things as a way of prevention. Now, if their, their bodies got out of balance for whatever reason, then they would go see their medical guy and he would try to rebalance their system so they would be back to normal. That's what Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine is really all about, balancing the body so that it gets back to its equilibrium. We are, in, we, are in a, uh, we are having war waged against us. So you need to have the def not only a defense but an offense. You know, I can't stop the activity from the sky, but I can shield myself the best way I can by creating toroidal fields, painting my house with lead paint, or an iron oxide and aluminum oxide paint mixed with paint, or a copper mixed with paint to shield myself from some of the frequencies that I'm being hit with. When I'm going outside, I can use some portable grounding material or some sort of shielding material that I can wear under my clothing. So we got to start thinking in how to be offensive. Oh, I hear the music, so come on back. We're going to get at it. See you in a bit. Hey, I think we're back. We're back on the remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelaresco. And again, you're listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. Um, I want to read something to you guys before I go on with what I was talking about prior to the break. Scientists create nanomaterials that can reconfigure in response to biochemical signals. Let me read this again. I want you to get this. I want you to understand that the nature of our illnesses today, the nature of our, our violations today, are all coming from nanobiology, nanobiotechnology, synthetic biology. Okay, we're not dealing with just a simple cold anymore. We're de dealing with something that's been altered on a nanogenetic level <coughs> or a nano integrated level that is making these things more than what they ever were. When we were talking about having a cold before, we'd get over a cold in three days. Now it's going to take up to three months for some of you. Okay, scientists create nanomaterials that can reconfigure in response to biochemical signals. Biological cells have, a, have the complex and miraculous ability to reconfigure 
and change the way they communicate with each other over time, allowing them to nimbly direct critical functions in the human body. From thinking and walking to fighting disease. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a second. When we're dealing with nanobiology, nanobiotech, synthetic biology, this alters those signaling pathways. It alters the DNA. It alters the genetic codes and capacity to communicate with the immune system, the digestive system, and all the other systems in the body. Okay, and this is why some of you are having problems. Uh, developing nanomaterials that can replicate aspects of these cellular functions and integrate with living systems. They, w they are creating these things to integrate with us. Now it's always, the theme is always about how it's going to benefit us, how it's going to make us better, how it's going to work with us, and so forth and so on. That's always been the excuse that this is all about, you know, and this is what they keep throwing out to everybody. This is again the brainwashing and the propagation and the programming that they keep throwing out at everybody. How they're doing this for the benefit of humanity, not of mankind, out of humanity. Because humanity is nothing but beasts, you know, a culture of beasts, a planet of beasts. This is how they, they, they're looking at you. So they created synthetic materials with the ability to mimic some behaviors normally associated with living matter. The ability to self-assemble, reconfigure, and disassemble in response to chemical signals as a common trait in biological materials. That's what nano uh, infections or nano afflictions do. They self-assemble, self-repair, self-replicate. Now they can reconfigure. This is why I keep telling everybody you cannot directly hit these things with some kind of direct energy focus whatsoever. Because if you do, they have what is called a morphology or the ability to change and reconfigure. They have the they have a defense mechanism within themselves, just like our immune system, so that if you hit them directly, they will alter what they are. If you want to integrate synthetic materials into biology, a seamless interface is desirable, which requires materials to share some of the properties of living matter. And that's what they've done. They've incorporated DNA, XNA, PNA, LNA uh, in, in cooperation with some of these things. So um, they've also incorporated, you know, conductors so that they can send and receive the signals. Um, and they're using a form of a, a simple amino acids that were added to the system. When you bind something with an amino acid, the body's going to respond with that component because that's what our bodies use amino acids we are primarily protein you know very little sugar is really in our system unless you live in the United States and Canada perhaps where you're eating a lot of corn or corn based products where your biology is 50, over 50 percent sugar and that's where they're getting this carbon based baloney that because people have got so much sugar in them you're primarily carbon 50 percent of you is carbon now because of all the corn and all the grains and all the crap we've been eating now, those of us who don't eat that stuff, we're going back to what we were before. Primarily a more protein uh, functioning body. Every biological system in the body is a protein. Enzymes are a protein. Your antibodies are proteins. You know, your, the bacteria in the biofilm your body produces is a protein. So when we're looking at all the proteins and the protein uh, functions in the system, I, I find it very hard to see where they're getting this concept that they're getting it from. Sugar is basically the energy source for a lot of the activities in the body, but proteins also can be used as energy, and so does fat. Anyway, nanomaterials with different properties, including programmable, including programmable nanostructures with the ability to turn electrical conduction on and off <laughs> through the use of time-dependent self-assembly and disassembly like neurons in the brain. But these are nanomaterials. What is this saying when you sit there and actually start connecting the dots? This is about integrating you with a machine. And the only way this is really possible is to, to compromise um, one's immune system, biological system, DNA, genetic code, and reprogram it so, so that it would accept this type of material. These materials exhibit a remarkable ability to remodel their electrical connections. What happens if it overloads your electrical connection? What does that do? What does that burn out? So by simply changing the chemical inputs, we can observe insulating nanomaterials, conductive na nanomaterials, or nanomaterials that dynamically switch between conducting and non-conducting states. Can you imagine that having, a, having that kind of material inside you turning you on and turning you off? 
Now, a lot of targeted, targeted individuals have this technology already inside of them. And they're being activated and deactivated just because of these materials, again, that they're getting, which they could have gotten from any source. Food, airborne, water, stuff you're buying at the food, uh, in your grocery store. These things could very, be very easy to be put in. I mean, we already saw two doctors from Italy come out and state, uh, you know, emphatically that the vaccines all carry nanoparticles inside of them that didn't belong there. What, do, what purpose are they in there for? What does that do to a fetus? What does that do to a young babe just born and then they want you to get them vaccinated right away? So you got to be offensive here and you got to learn to say no. There are times to say yes and there are times it's to your advantage to comply if it's mutually, mutually, um, uh, what's the term, um, doable for both sides. But if you're taking a vaccine that's causing your child to have all these, some of you have never even looked at the CDC database. And you should look at the CDC database of all the side effects and da damages that the vaccines have caused over time. I think there's over 30 million, something like that, some high number. That's a, that's a big number. And some of you are blissfully running in there saying, oh, it's okay, you know, we've never seen anything like, you know, when everything ever happened before, and then you got a child with some kind of autoimmune disorder because you gave the child a vaccine. And I, and I seriously think, seriously, this is my, uh, my humblest of opinions, that if anybody is stupid enough to give their child a vaccine, I think you should be the one to take the vaccine first. I think you should roll up the sleeve let them inject you with whatever they're going to put into your child. The 25 or 30 vaccines that they want to put in there. They should. <laughs> they should seriously give it to you. I think you should feel the wrath of your stupidity. I have no qualm about that. You know, I think then when you come crawling through my door and begging for help, say, oh, I took a vaccine. I took my kid's shot. Oh, my gosh, I haven't felt this sick. Then you'll know what the child is going to go through. I think every parent that is dumb enough to do this should be the ones to volunteer their arms to see the effect of that vaccine and what it's going to do to you. And you're an adult. That's just my take on the whole thing. You know, I'm one of those guys that doesn't believe in fooling around with our DNA. I'm one of those guys that you know, believes you shouldn't be fooling around with our genetic code. I'm one of those guys that shouldn't, you know, that believes that, you know, things that shouldn't, you know, the early vaccines were never done through an injection they were done through the skin like a topical in other words they would scratch the skin or just beneath the surface of the skin and then the skin would allow it to slowly penetrate in the system now we got CRISPR coming CRISPR is right around the corner we can now get into CRISPR and we can now genetically engineer plants without having to add a virus or any other component to it other than maybe a yeast to alter the genetic component of a plant how much of our plants Today, have nano biotechnology like the smart sensors, the smart dust, the nano silver, the nano silica, you know, and you're eating it, not realizing that you're consuming it. Or if you are realizing it, you're, like, you're beside yourself now because you're freaking out that you've been eating this stuff for decades. Decades, okay? So when we're looking at what we can do again, we can't all have a greenhouse. We can't all have, we, some of us live in apartments, and so you're like, oh man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, you're going to learn to take the antidote before you eat the food. You've got trisodium phosphate. You've got sunflower lecithin. You've got uh, uh, IP6. Okay, you want to get the IP6 that doesn't have soy or any other crap in it. You just want the anastol with the phosphorus. That's all you want. Uh, because an oso with phosphorus actually permeates through the cellular membrane and allows nutrients to be taken in and crap to be taken out. But if it's mixed with soy and some other excipient, then you want to leave it alone. Find it as pure as you can. Try pure bulk. Try uh, peak nutrition. Uh, try some of the online. Uh, try eBay, uh, Amazon. Try looking for these things and getting them as pure and as clean as possible and start using these things. Um, when we're looking at... What we can do here, this will help, again, flush these things out of the cells. If you make a liposome, let's go back to the liposome. That is a phosphorus. Sunflower lesson is anositol and choline. Ooh, anositol and choline. What does anositol and choline do? 
Oh, wow, it keeps the brain functioning. Wow, it keeps the brain active. It keeps the connections in the brain. Wow, the Inasso actually helps regulate the brain's energy and um, um, memory functions. Choline acts as a, a support for the acetylcholine. Wow, we got a connected brain again. We can actually start to think. <laughs> Add a little rosemary to it, a little sage, a little thyme, a little bay leaf extract. Mix it together. Now you've got a new tropic. Ooh. And you got something that's going to go into the cells and help r remove or bind with some of these toxins that the body's absorbing. Cheap, easy, and inexpensive. And anybody can make these things. Okay, they're really that simple. Oh, say we got to chelate some minerals out of the body. Okay, so let's go get some L-cysteine or MSM and mix it with that liposome. Add a little IP6 with it. You know, and now you got something that's going to go in there and chelate those minerals, out, those metals out of the body. Let's try, let's get a little EDTA, shall we? So let's get some EDTA and mix that with some, uh, some L-cysteine or some garlic powder. Add some enzymes. Mix it in there with the liposome. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. We're on a roll here now. We're going right into the cells. We're pulling stuff out. We're getting all this crap out of the body. We're cleaning up the brain. We're cleaning up the cells. We're giving the organs a chance to take a break. We're helping the liver. What more could you want? This is some of the things that we can do. Tony, can you take selenium on an empty stomach with iodine and tyrosine? You can. Um, it may nauseate you. <laughs> But you can do it. I would probably mix it with a coffee or something else, uh, or even mix it with yogurt. Uh, it's like I said, it's that's kind of a um, selenium and iodine alone can can cause nausea. So if you're not if if you can handle it, by all means do so. But I mean sometimes um, some people it can it can be an overpowering effect because again some people have a lot of bacteria and biofilm in the gut. And this stuff is going to react with that. So you, you can, it can nauseate you. Even zinc on an empty stomach can nauseate you if you take too much. So, again, you know, uh, tinker with it. You know, I'm always, all, I'm always for you guys tinkering. Add it to yogurt. Add it to kefir. Add it to, you know, uh, add it to with a little cream. Take a little cream, 35% cream. You know, we've got one here in Canada, uh, Meadowbrook cream. It's got nothing in it. No uh, polysorbate 60, no, no crap in it. And you can mix it up and you got, another, you got a liposome. Whip it in there, you know, whip it up really good and away you go, you know, get, get it down in you. And that's a slow time release you got now. You know those time release vitamins that they used to sell you? Well, a lot of those time release vitamins used to go in one way, out the other. Nothing ever happened because the coating was so tough you couldn't break it down. Then they got everybody in this high alkaline diet and that shuts down the colons. Because you got four acids in the colon, and if you neutralize those acids in the colon, you cannot break down anything in the colon. Butyric acid, propionic acid, acetic acid, lactic acid, you know. So, you know, be careful about some of this alkaline, alkalizing diets. You do, need, you do need the salts, you do need the minerals, and they should be bound with some kind of acid or some kind of um, chloride or some kind of sulfur or some kind of phosphorus to get the best uptake of these minerals so they get into the cells get into the tissues uh, get into the into the muscle they need to get the, they need to get to their destination if they don't get there then what do you got an expensive pile of crap coming out your backside because you're not breaking it down this is very key even if you took butyric acid and mixed them with those minerals that would go so far and then combine it in a, in a cream or a liposome of some kind. Liposome doesn't have to be sunflower lesson. I like that one because it is a phosphorus. And again, it's getting it into the cells. And we need this kind of stuff on a cellular level. We need to regenerate our bodies on a cellular level. Okay. So again, when we're looking at what we can do, let's get offensive. Okay. Let's get offensive. So when we're looking at what we can do, how we can do things, what we should be doing... Uh, we got a variety of different things and so and you have a lot of, lot more at your disposal all you gotta do is do a little research R&D investigate not just do a little Google Google Blue, whatever you know and start looking at you know look at patents free patents online Google patents okay Google patents is the same as free patents online 
So if you go look at the patents, you may find that in the patents you can see how they formulate some of these things, and you can modify the formulations so that you're not you know, doing anything bad. You not wouldn't be doing anything bad anyway because you're not selling it. But you can modify the patents so that you can make them even more effective than what they're, they're, they've got. I, I looked at some of the patents and said, well, that's okay, but I can do, I can do better, and I, and I modify them. <clears throat> but this is another venue where you can investigate. So you're not, you're not being led like a jackass into the, into the slaughter. You know, you can then say, wait a minute, time out here. I'm going to go and get an antidote. I'm going to, I'm going to take a precursor to block this stuff. I'm going to, you know, take some preventative, preventative offensive measures so I don't get knocked on my backside. Or if I do get knocked on my backside, I'm going to bounce right back up again. See, it, these are things we can do. And they're not expensive. Even if you're on a fixed income uh, 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 pension of some kind, of retirement pension, pension, if you're on social, some sort of social, financial stuff, yeah, how much do these things cost? You know, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. It won't break the bank. You can make stuff that can last you a month, you know. If you take a little vodka and a little garlic, hell, that'll last you forever. Unless you're, you know, you're, you're drinking it down pretty quick. Unless you got a health issue, then you'll go through it. But I mean, a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, every couple hours, okay, magic number. You get knocked on your backside. They drop the rain on you or they drop some snow and they release some crap in the air and you're breathing it in. You feel like somebody ran a Mack truck over you and three or four times, okay? You're hurt. Your body's sore. You're disorientated. You're just out of balance. You can't, you don't know what day it is. You don't even know who you are, what your name is, whatever, okay? You're that beat up. Okay, whatever you're going to take, whatever you've got set up, it's going to be five times a day or every two or three hours. The idea is we're going to use this like an intravenous. We're going to maintain and sustain this in the system so that the body has it all the time so that it can deal with whatever you're dealing with. And now your body has the resources to acquiesce, to get, to utilize in order to be able to do what it has to do. Okay. Once you understand the nature of how you're being unglued, taken apart, shattered, ripped, torn, broken down, whatever's going on, then you can form an attack. If you know that these things can happen, then you can form an offense. In other words, you can start taking these things long before you get afflicted, so that if you do get hit, you're still standing. If some of you guys got one of those things that you can make your own alcohol, hey, it's even better because then you can make the alcohol even stronger than what you're buying at the store. And that'll give you a better extraction. How about using something as simple as cinnamon bark? Ooh, cinnamon bark. Some of you got some pancreas issues. You, know, you got diabetes, okay? So, go get yourself some juniper berry. Go get yourself some cinnamon bark. Real cinnamon bark. Go get yourself some real peppermint. Put them together, equal parts. Blend them up in that alcohol. Again, about two cups per whatever you're using, a couple ounces of each of the uh, material. Blend it up. Let it blend for 10 minutes, strain it, or pour everything into a container. Let it separate and start using that five or six times a day, before and after every meal. And watch all of a sudden how your pancreas will start to function again. The insulin won't be so bad. Now, if you want to repair the pancreas, you want to get something like bitter melon. And add the bitter melon with that, and you got, it, you got something now that's going to repair the pancreas. See, you got things that you can do, you know. You got things you can do. So it's not like you're, you know, you're at a disadvantage because you don't know because of ignorance. Okay. Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge or lack of, lack of wisdom. Time to smarten up. Don't you think? This way you don't get your ass taken out. Your, your backside taken out. <laughs> okay. That's how it works. That's how it works. Once you know, then you apply. And if you've been afflicted, you take it every couple hours. This way I don't get 25 emails saying, how, are you, how do I do this? Every couple hours. All right. You got the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network, a network that you should be supporting. Not these gurus that are ripping you off and not these bozos out there selling you junk that isn't going to do something or, you know, these mystical, magical, mayhem guru dummies, you know, selling whatever. So you should be supporting this network and give them what they need to keep it going, keep it floating. You know, just how else are you going to get shows like this, right? So help them any way you can. You got ByeByeBlueSky.com, Brian396.com, you got GagCanada.com, you got AugmentEnforce.com, you got sites there that are going to give you the, sco the scoop 
on what's happening. Going to keep you informed, keep you wise, keep you knowledgeable. Support those places. Give them your support any way you can. You know, uh, when these activists put it on the line, they're subjected to being targeted. You know, one of them did get targeted, got targeted pretty heavy. So, again, keep them on, keep them going, you know. If they go down, so do you. Think about it that way because they're the ones giving you the, the heads up of what's happening. And once they get, you know, and if they keep, keep giving you the heads up on what's happening, it allows you to be forearmed and, for, and for, uh, to uh, get ahead of the game. AugmentedForce.com. There's a link there, catalog link. Feel free to access the link. You got the flash drive. You got the bucket. You got the triangle. You got all kinds of things there. Check it out. And if there isn't on there and you're looking for something, give me a shout or send me an email. And I'll see what I can do to eat. Because I make a lot of stuff I do on the YouTube too. So if you're looking for stuff, I can make it for you. Provided you don't. I would rather you do it yourself. I, I want to emphasize that. These videos were designed so that you would help yourself. Okay. Think of it in these terms. Think of it in these terms, okay? What happens if guys like me are not around? What are you going to do? Are you going to fall back and follow these bloody gurus and these dumb doctors who don't know their butt from a hole in the ground? Are you going to go back to that nonsense? See, this is what the whole thing was about, so that you are autonomous. You're not enslaved to that kind of horse hockey. You can then take it and run with it. Nobody can take that from you. You can do it. That's the whole idea behind those videos. So that's the concept that you know I want you guys to have, so that you can you can do it. If you can't do it for whatever reason, then give me a shout. I will help you and help you make it or whatever. And for you girly girls, no such thing as a girly girl. You got two hands, two feet, and a heartbeat. Get off your backside and say I'm gonna try. Not that I, I don't know if I can. You're gonna try. <laughs> You're going to give it a good go. You might be surprised what you can achieve, eh? And for those of you guys who, you know, you guys have never done anything like this before, same thing. You're going to try. What do you got to do? So if you screw up, big deal. You did it when you were riding the bike, right? You fell off the bike. You got up, got back on the bike. You fell off until you got it right. No different. Except you're not going to sc scuff your knees when you fall off if you don't get it right with this thing. So just keep on doing it. You'll get it. I am sure you'll get it. I am positive you'll get it. So again, this is the whole concept here for you to be autonomous and don't let anybody BS you. Don't listen to these half-baked half gurus that don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. They couldn't tie their shoe with Velcro. As Joel McNeil used to say, they're dumb as a bag of rocks. And they are. <laughs> so don't, be, don't follow them. You know, learn. Do it yourself. Okay, so that's the whole concept there. Alrighty, so now you've got all kinds of remedies. You're going to take, it, take the bull by the horn. You're going to do it. You are now going to be offensive. <laughs> you're going to be offensive. You're, gonna take the, you're not going to be a victim of this crap anymore. If you get knocked on your backside, you're going to get up. You're going to dust your knees, pull up your socks, and keep on going. You're going to keep on learning. You're not going to quit. You can't quit. The option is this. You quit, you're in the box. You put you in the box, they put you in the ground. They'll give you a Nintendo and a blanket. You don't get out to, get to come out on weekends. You are there for the duration. <laughs> so while you're here, do something with it. That's my point. Okay, that's the whole concept about all of this. Okay, while you're here, while you're here, do something with it. Don't just sit on your backside. Don't just take it on the chin. Do something with it. Okay, and you can the videos are there, the websites are there, look at them, study them, do your own investigations, follow the videos, see where it takes you. You might be surprised, eh? You just might be surprised. And it's not like you can't do it. You can. Okay, I hear the music. All right, so we'll see you Thursday. Till then, get with it. Get off your backside and do something. All right, take care, eh?